I just had to like come to, you know, realize that we're working on something different. It, it should be a different interpretation of what, you know, this album or this song is and, you know, play around that we're adding an experience that the other people on the regular one don't really get. Ladies and gentlemen, this guy right here, his name's Tiny. You've seen his name. <laughs> Seen his name a lot of places. Do you? You don't. I wouldn't say you show your face a lot. Not that much. A lot more these past couple of years, right. but I would say not that much. This guy right here is the sound man. He's been putting on for a lot of your favorites out there for a long time. He's coming to us today with a new project. How you doing, man? Thanks for joining us, man. Thank you, man, for having me. And I'm I'm great, bro. I'm I'm happy to be here. Happy to be alive at this time, you know, and doing music. I want to go back, kind of go back, man. Yeah. Um, just to kind of set the convo for today, what would you say is your first breakout hit as a producer and you know songwriter and all that? So, so I think in in that term, I always divided in kind of like two because mm -hmm. the first time they started to give me a chance, you know, being under the umbrella of Looney Tunes, which yeah. you know where the producers doing everything <laughs> for everybody. Everything, bro. So you know, I came in and you know it's kind of like that finding your place, you know, mentality, because you already got the top dogs, you know, doing their thing. So how do you fit in? So I got the chance working on this, you know, project for new up and coming artists called Sangre Nueva. And there I got a chance to work with Hector El Fader, yeah. Yom on a track called Dejale Caer el Peso. So that to me was what got me known in Puerto Rico. Like, you know, when, when you listen to the, like, the motorcycles, like, in, in the cars, like, with the bass and everything, like, sounding with the windshields down, like, that's where I feel like I made it because I never heard my music, you Just know. Just blaring one of those. out the cars. So when you hear that, I feel like, okay, I, I arrived in a sort of way. Down on Isla Verde on a Friday night. Yeah, you already know. <laughs> so, so that's where I feel like, yo, like, this is something people started to know my name or ask yeah. for that sound. But I knew that was a Puerto Rico, you know, kind of thing. Like, you made it, you know, in the streets. You got your cred in, in, in music and respect. But now you had to, like, see this genre exploding and going, you know, worldwide. So we seen Yandel gave me that. And that was the track called Bam Bam. That, that you know. That was huge. That was something different, a whole ball game. Like, yeah. I never knew about Billboard charts or whatever. And that, you know, I started seeing all of those things, you know. And just everything changed, you know, because it, it went in a in a moment where, you know, we seen Young they were becoming global. Listen, you know, them dudes. Icons. They took it far, didn't they? Yeah, man. Like, those, those, I got to give it up to those, you know, dudes. But, and they, they believed in me, you know, from, from the start. So this problem, or this, this problem, I'll call it, of this project, I'm sure, was getting all of the people, because there's so many different people that you worked with. Can you just talk about how you navigated that? You got J. Cole. Arca, Arc Angel, Mike Towers, Omar Quartz is on there. Um, but getting all of these people to, I mean, these are all people you've worked with in different yeah. capacities, but putting out your own project, I've heard it's really hard as a producer to do that. Yeah, man. Like, you know, when I started to do, you know, reggaeton music and came in, you know, what the producers that I admire were doing were these, you know, various artists projects. You know, it's something that was part of the culture, you know, growing up. So my it's thought like was... like mixtapes back then. Yeah. yeah. That's what it was. But you had like all these amazing artists come in and do their thing and trying to like shine the best with yeah. it. You know, it was you know, every, Yeah, everybody's like coming, you know, to do their thing. So that to me was like, I want to have my Looney Tunes, you know, moment, DA Blast moment. I want to have that and have all these combinations of different artists. But, you know, me orchestrating, you know, or what the, the, the sound is. But, you know, I... I you know, it took me a couple of years to like make me feel that I'm at my, you know, my peak, you know, creatively in my sound, have the right team and all these things. But the music has changed so much. The the genre has exploded and become such a like a superstar, like kind of like heavy, you know, genre. It's now it's no longer like the kids from right. you know, the block Around down the, way, the block, yeah, yeah. like coming over here, like trying to like, you know, put their mixtape or like put their singles out to get known, like I think it was a lot more easier to probably get those, you know, artists to come in and and work and maybe, you know, have now them it's mentality. Big business. It's politics now. It's you know what I mean. It's, it's politics. Big money. It's, it's all yeah, of that. Yeah. You know, and, and how we were talking, you know, the schedules like they probably have an album coming out. Right. They have a single coming right. out. So they can't 
do this at this time this time because it's gonna like block whatever they're trying right, to do right, in right. their own thing. So all those things coming together, like I understand why there's not that many, you know, much done because it's tough, you know, and I understand them, you know. It's not like they don't want to do it or like But they got their obligations. They they got yeah. their thing. Yeah. So, you know, I was truly, you know, blessed and happy and, and happy and, you know, grateful to them that even though they're doing their thing, like they'll find a way to like, okay, I wanna make this happen. So I'll figure it out with the label. I'll do this over here. And, you know, I got it to work, but it took me like three years, you know, to get the sound right, to get them together, to get the session going, because most of them were on tour, so I'll have to fly to wherever they at so they can, you know, be able to do it. So it was a process that took time, but, you know, uh, um, I was blessed to like be able to do it. And I didn't want to do like a short, like five, six songs EP because, you know, I, we don't know, like maybe this is the only album that I end up doing. So I really wanted to combine like everything that's a part of me or my influences and what, you know, was with me or worked with me when I started. That's why you see, you know, the Wisin Yandel, the Sion Yelenos, the Arcangel, Daddy Yankee, until like nowadays and you had the Benitos and Raul Alejandro, J Balvin, like Miko, like all the new, you know, generation. So I wanted all of that that has to do with, you know, the blessed career that I've been able to have to be a part of that. So, you know, it's 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 a tough one. I don't know if I'm doing another one like after this, <laughs> but you know, I, I, I get why it's, you know, it's kinda tough to like maybe bring some of these to life, but I'm I'm happy that we were able to do Congratulations, it. Congratulations, man. Thank you, brother. Oh, how'd you get the name Tiny? So it's, it's kind of like like funny. So when I come in, I get signed by the Looney Tunes and, you know, um, the beat that I play for them just to see if I, you know, if I have it, like to demonstrate, is the one that ends up being the intro for their various artists album called Mas Flow Dos. But they needed the credits, you know, to put the album out. So I didn't have a name. I didn't have anything. So they're like brainstorming, trying to think of, you know, what, what could it be? And one of the guys says like, yo, he looks like, the younger, like small version of Tunes, which was, you know, one of the half of, you know, of Looney, Looney and, and Tunes. Yeah. So, you know, they already have like the cartoonish, you know, name. So it say like, we also saw the Tiny Tunes. All right, so that's tiny where like, tunes. their Looney Tunes is like the, the smaller version. He's the Tiny, tiny Tunes. tunes. That's so fine. that's where, you know, we started and, you know, it, it changed a little bit. We had to add, you know, the A in between the T and the I. Right. It helps because there's so many tinies around the world, but at the same time, in Spanish, people will say a tiny uh, because that's how they would read it and, and this pronounce way, it. Phonetically, it's tiny. T exactly. -I -N -Y. Yeah, that's dope. This album is available in Spatial Audio, also on Apple Music. Now, Tiny, I've heard you're a big fan of Spatial Audio. Yeah. And I, I want to have this conversation because when new technology comes around, you're a sound guy and you're a technology guy. Yes. But as always, there's apprehension. Where, whether it's the musicians and the producers or the artists who get accustomed to hearing it a certain mm -hmm. way, they're comfortable in that, and then new technology comes. Talk through a little bit of how, like, your brain works when you're doing spatial and figuring out how to make something sound the best. So, so for me, you know, and I get all the points that you just said, it was my first, you know, kind of thoughts when I, you know, started to see what the process was and seeing maybe the end result of the first thing that I ever did, it was different. And that to me kind of like- Put your head yeah, a little bit. Yeah, like, cause like, damn, it doesn't sound how I want it to sound. So people are gonna get something that's not what I have, you know, in my head. So I just had to like come to, you know, realize that we're working on something different. It, it should be a different interpretation of what, you know, this album or this song is. And, you know, play around that we're adding an experience that the other people on the regular one don't really get. So, you know, it should be treated in a in a different way. And maybe the sound would be exactly the same, you know, will have the same effect, but it would be two different experiences. So right. that's why I really want to like go into the details when we're going to the spatial and like seeing what things could like, you know, make it more exciting, you know, could be added with this new technology. And, you know, I, I just found my way with it and, and, and came to understand a little bit more. I'm still learning, you know? Yeah. I know everybody so is. Much, right? There's so much you could do. Yeah. We got to leave with the OG. He did an interlude for you, Chencho yeah. Corleone. Talk about why it was important to have him on your project. So, Chencho, like, you know, 
if, if you're from Puerto Rico, like, you know what he, he means, you know, to reggaeton. And he's always done reggaeton, like, at, at its, you know, purest, you know. And he's been, he's an OG. He's been doing it for a while. So to see him, like, to this day, just putting out hits and transform his sound and just keep on doing such amazing music. And I just have so much respect for him. I told him, I need you on the project, bro. Like, he's, and he's always been, you know, down from day one, you know, he's always had me you know, in mind for his projects or like, you know, sending ideas and talking. So I really wanted, I had this idea that sci-fi that has, you know, this sort of like more 80s, you know, house, you know, kind of feel. But at the end, I just wanted to play around with it. And I just started like using the original melody and sample it and play with the pitch down. And it just sounded cool. It sounded like a different track. Yeah. And so I said like, let me play a little bit more with this. And it became like this really slowed down reggaeton beat and it just became like bro like crazy gritty you know like 4 a.m in the club or whatever like in puerto rico so i said like there's just a handful of guys that can really come in and just kill this and chincha was one of them so as soon as i showed him the idea and push you know it's you know it's a transition into this one you know, and most of the artists would probably say, like, I ain't doing no, you know, interlude. Like, I'm doing my track, you know, it's got to be a single. It's got to do all these things. But they understood my vision, and he just, like, did something crazy. I know that people would wish it was, you know, a longer track. Hopefully, we can come up with some idea. Joint, right? Yeah, but it was dope, and dope for him that he, you know, took a chance to do it. Tiny, big up, man. Thank you. No, I appreciate you, brother, for, you know, having me here. It's a blessing, you know, and thank you for everything that you're doing, you know. You know, putting us over here and putting this, you know, music out there every day, you know, it's, it's special for us coming, you know, from Latin America and being able to sit down over here, Apple Music, and, you know, put our messages and in, 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 in who we are out there and, you know, for you to give it, you know, give us that platform. And no, it's, it's love, special, man. Brother. Love. It's, it's fire, bro. Thank Listen, you. Listen, it's fire. <laughs> I'm honored. Tiny, go so get much. that new project, Data, available right now on Apple Music. Yeah.